I absolutely love my life at the moment. The freedom, the flexibility, the time I get to work on my own projects and I get paid for doing it is just amazing. And so, yeah, it's 100% worth it. Welcome to the Quit Work Podcast, 15-minute conversations with people who have quit their job and gone their own way. I'm Mark, and today I'm talking to James McKinvan, who uh, quit his job to set up as a freelance podcast editor at Podpanda, as well as bootstrap several other businesses. He puts out two podcasts of his own, Indie Bites and No More Mondays. And he has a podcasting course called Two Hour Podcast, and he handcrafts leather wallets at the Whitstable Craft Co. James welcome to the quit work podcast mark thank you so much for having me when i came across the quit work podcast the the idea of uh quitting your job to pursue something that makes your life better just really spoke to me so i'm excited to speak to you about how how i did it for myself your life sounds exhausting why not just get a job (laughs) (laughs) oh mark at this point i think i'm pretty much unemployable and (laughs) I say that in the nicest way possible, because of course, if, if I needed to, I, I could get a job and I would work. But I enjoy the freedom that I get from working on my own projects so much. When I was younger, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I always wanted to run my own business. What I was actually going to do, I don't know. But that was, it was always going to be something. Uh, I, when I was really young, I wanted to be a big business, loads of employees, raise venture capital. But then I discovered the indie hacker movement the slow, sustainable, small, one-person business. I discovered this chap called Danny Vasalo who talks about having a portfolio of small bets. So I'm sort of pursuing this, having multiple different projects, multiple different revenue streams, exploring interests where I have them. So podcasting is my thing at the moment. That's where I spend a lot of my time. But also, as you said, I've got the leather wallets, which couldn't be more different. So I don't think I could ever go back and, and get a job. The indie thing is fascinating. One of the reasons I started the Quit Work podcast is that I meet more and more people who are just done with working for big organisations. And I kind of think the future of work is small, like you know, people working for themselves or with a few other people. And it seems like you're, you're all in on working independently. What are your thoughts on that kind of like small business versus big business indie versus billion dollar startup? Yeah, there's been a huge resurgence uh, especially with COVID. You've heard of the great resignation, everyone having the time to reevaluate their lives. Actually, they don't want to work for these big businesses that have so much control over their time and then living for the weekends. People want to live their life. And to do that at a big company is kind of hard because you have all these constraints. You have politics, you have bureaucracy. And there are some companies that are doing better, but mostly it's inescapable. The only way to really get that freedom, well, the freedom that I wanted was to go indie, to go bootstrapped, go for a small business. You mentioned uh, what are my thoughts on small business versus large business versus a solo entrepreneur. I think there's different routes for every different personality type. Some people love the big business route. They really want to scale their startup. They get a lot of energy from that, and that's absolutely fine. My friends Saba Kenijard and Tim Tim Mamadoff from Veed. Uh, they are absolute freaks of nature. Uh, they are really intense, super talented startup founders. Originally, they were bootstrapped indie hackers. They took their company Veed from zero to six million in revenue bootstrapped. And I worked with them for a little while. And it's just a wonderful place to be because there's a real sense of camarad- camaraderie in the team. And for people that work there, it's great. They love it. Like that is what they want to do. It's just not for me. And Tim and Saba, they've just raised 35 million from Sequoia. So they've gone from solo entrepreneurs, bootstrapped a big company, and now they're a VC backed company and they're loving the ride. But for me, I just enjoy the freedom of time and flexibility. The one downside of it though, Mark, is that you end up working a lot, even though you want this flexibility and you can chop and change often your business is your life and it's always on your mind so there sometimes isn't that much of a break and over the year past 18 months I've 
run into my first battles with mental health because of it. Uh, that's probably why I left my job in the first place was because of this mental health thing I ran into um, and just taking on too much work. So that is something you've got to be wary of. But yeah, I would, I would never go back. There's, there's so much I want to dig into there. Let, let's start with uh, the job that you quit. What, what were you doing before you quit? Yeah, so I was working as a marketing manager at a company called System One. It was a market research firm for advertising. And funnily enough, I actually still work for my boss. Oh, cool. And my old boss as a client. So he runs a podcast called The Uncensored CMO. It was one of the things I did while I had this job. And when I left, he still wanted to carry on the podcast. And I said, well, how about you pay £350 for me to produce an episode for you? And he was like, that sounds good. So I still yeah. work for him. I had a great relationship with my boss, but now I get to do his podcast when, uh, well, I get to edit it on my schedule as opposed to within these nine to five confines. So that was a job I did. That's, uh, that's an amazing way to quit, isn't it? First of all, keeping great relations with your employer. And secondly, using freelancing and particularly freelancing with the people that you've worked with before as a route to support you in your future endeavors. Yeah, I think it's a really smart move because some people can, <laughs> I've just said my own move is smart. There, there, there are different <laughs> routes, right? You can either s save up a lot of, um, save up some runway. So when you leave your job, you have this money that can support you or sustain you over a set period of months to make your side project or your business work. Or you can just leave your job and keep your old job as on a client if you want to go down the freelancing route. Yeah. So for me, I want to make... Uh, my own podcast, Indie Bites and No More Mondays. Those are the things I want to pay the bills for me, really. Those are the things yeah. I enjoy the most. But right now, I need the freelancing in order to pay the bills. I just do it with a bit more flexibility. So it's one route I don't think people consider all that often. Yeah. It is either got to build my business to match my salary. And the problem with that is you end up getting used to having like two salaries because your business yes. might get to <laughs> two and a half grand a month. And your salary is two and a half grand a month. So you're actually used to five grand. So you're halving your income yeah. when you leave or yeah. building up runway, which people that are good with money can do. I'm not. So have to do the freelancing. <laughs> so you've obviously always been uh, interested in entrepreneurship. What, what was the one thing that finally made you uh, quit that job and uh, go all in on freelancing mm. and your indie projects? Yeah. So I always moonlighted. Um, while I was working for various companies. So I was working for a marketing agency before. And then while I was at the agency, I was always doing video work on the side. Then when I was working for System One, I was doing the podcast editing on the side. I was doing video work on the side. And I was it wasn't really a sustainable amount. It was maybe yeah. £300 here, £500 there. Never quite matched my salary until... A gig came along, which was actually surpassing my salary for just one client. And that was doing YouTube videos for Riverside.fm. I thought I could take it on with the full-time job. I thought, well, it's just some extra cash. Yeah. I may have to work a little bit harder, but great, more money. And that was when I started to think, I could maybe make this work. If I can do this yeah. Riverside work, which is actually paying more than my salary, get maybe one more client like this fantastic but what I ended up doing is just working too much so stopped working with Riverside but then had the confidence there yeah first of absolutely. all went part-time with system one while getting some more podcasting clients and then I don't think it was a a smooth quitting my job mark I don't know how other people you speak to on this podcast if they uh, like yes right Tomorrow, I'm going for it. I'm building my business. It was more of, I've really overdone it. I'm feeling really lost and confused. And I don't think working for this company is what I want. So I did carry on working just on the podcast, but that was £1,400 a month rather than my salary, which was like 2500 plus the extra money that I was getting from other freelance work. So I got used to a certain level of income, ran into burnout and depression, and thought, yeah, I don't want to carry on with work. And pretty much after I quit my job, I took two or three months off from doing really anything substantial before going on holiday and coming back feeling refreshed and ready to go. And that's when I launched Bob Panda in the course and 
getting back onto things with indie bikes and so on. One of the things I really love about the way you work is you, you do a lot of building in public. You, you're you very open about the kind of things that you've just been talking about, about burnout and <laughs> about the uh, difficulties of all this. How do you get the courage to, to put that kind of stuff out there? Oh, Mark, I've always been a huge oversharer. Um, <laughs> and I've always just been completely open. I've never understood why people are so closed off about... Um, money they're making or various things. I mean, some people have their reasons, but I find it really beneficial if other people are open and honest with yeah. me. I'm a very open and honest person, but that's not the reason I'm so open with things on Twitter and I'm doing the building in public. I'm doing that because I found that there's this community on Twitter and with indie hackers that are all super, super supportive if you share what you're working on, if you share the journey. You get advice along the way. You get to test different concepts. You have this core audience of people that follow you, that are interested in what you're doing, that you can tweet about, send them emails, have conversations even uh, in private Slack communities. And that is all because you're open and sharing your journey, your progress. Don't just share the wins, share the failures, share the challenges. Yeah. I write a lot on my blog about some of the challenges that I go through and it's almost therapeutic for me for writing down these challenges and being so open because it helps me yeah. kind of find out what I'm thinking, what direction I want to go in if I've written it down and sent my thoughts out there. But all, often I get people read those articles and I have a conversation with them because maybe they'll come at it with a different perspective. It's just a win-win being so open online. Yeah, it's uh, it's hugely beneficial, I think, for other people to hear about this because a lot of this kind of stuff, the you know, the money side of things, the burnout side of things, like you say, people don't talk about these things, and that means that when somebody is feeling burnt out or somebody doesn't know where to go with their money problems, they feel very alone. So having people like yeah. you out there talking about yeah. it, I think, really helps. I've been seeing more and more people opening up and sharing their stories, and maybe that's given me the confidence to do it. Yeah. But what I've also found is since I've shared my stories of the mental health problems, as I said, it was the first time I'd ever run into any mental health problems. I didn't really understand it before. Members of my family had, but I hadn't. And I did a podcast episode on it. I was very open writing on my blog about it. And the amount of messages I got from people on Twitter, on Slack, that have been through a similar thing, and I didn't know they were going through a similar thing. They could give me advice on how they were dealing with it. Maybe they just wanted someone to talk to you that is going through a similar thing at the same time. A lot of people were affected by the lockdowns inflicted by COVID. Yeah. I know I certainly did because I was just alone in this flat all the time. And I started to make a bunch of changes uh, to my life here, which means that I'm never going to feel that way again. Because I think partly it was working that job, doing the freelancing, not leaving the house, getting yeah. stressed, not doing exercise, not feeding myself well, was all a terrible concoction for me feeling terrible. It's amazing how much the basics really help. Just before you uh, joined me for this uh, recording, you were out playing tennis, which uh, is uh, <laughs> one of the perks of having an indie lifestyle is that you can just go out and play some tennis in the middle of the day. But it's also super important for your, your mental health. Tennis is one of the things that is kept me going through this time through covid um well we actually stopped playing tennis during covid that was like november 2020 when i was at my worst we didn't have any tennis so going out and playing twice a week you get all the endorphins from doing the exercise i get a challenge i get to run about i get to let off some steam i feel great when i come back from doing tennis one thing i do with tennis that people don't understand is I don't play matches people go well if you, if you train and get coached twice a week why don't you play matches and it's because I don't want the competition I just want to enjoy it and I want to get better I want to improve how I'm playing yeah. but I just enjoy hitting balls for an hour with my coach who is an absolute legend he's a literal human ball machine and <laughs> such a lovely chap and I enjoy that I enjoy going out and, and playing tennis and golf yeah. more recently. Do you do any sports, Mark? Not for a while, actually. I used to play uh, football, or for North American listeners, that's uh, soccer. <laughs> a few years back, I managed to kind of basically snap my thumb off playing a football match. Oh, my goodness. 
it had to get surgery to get the ligaments kind of reattached. It didn't completely come off, but it, uh, it wasn't good. So I actually haven't played football since then. Oh my gosh, Mark. But I live in the mountains, so I get out in the mountains. Oh, I remember us chatting about this on Twitter, about going out on the walks through the mountains. And I yep. would love to do something like that. We, we don't have much amazing scenery where I live in southeast of England. We have the beach. I like going for walks on the beach. But I'd love to do a long weekend up to Snowdonia or maybe yeah. Scotland and just spend a week in the mountains doing hikes, seeing some beautiful scenery. And I'm very jealous of you, Mark, for being able to do <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel pretty lucky to be living here. So you've also floated the idea on Twitter about talking about your journey tackling debt. And I know this is one of the other things mm. that you're kind of far more open to talking about money and how to fund your indie project. So tell us a little bit about your journey with debt. Yeah, I, I'm i self-confessed terrible with money. I have always spent more than I've earned. I've always wanted to earn a lot of money. I've typically been, well, for my age, I was successful with it. And like, as my income increased, my spending increased. I like nice things. I like technology. And I've never really had uh, a, a lid on it. I just keep spending. I just can't stop myself. And that has led to me using credit cards a lot. Quite often, I'll go, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix the problem I have with debt, all this spending on my credit cards with money I don't have, the stuff that I don't need to impress people that I don't like. <laughs> yeah. And I'll go and get a loan to consolidate these credit cards. So I'll pay off all the credit cards. Now I just have this one single payment. And then I rack up the credit cards again and I've got this loan and the credit card payment still to do. Yeah. And then I've done that again where I've, and then it's another loan. So I have like a few outstanding loans, which were to consolidate the credit card debt. And I've then racked up the credit cards again. And I'd not really been too open with it. I sometimes laugh it off and always had the mindset of, oh, I'll, I'll just earn more. And that's what I've had to do. I've had to go, right, go on a real sprint, get some more clients, sell some more stuff. And it's always chasing my tail. And it came to a point last, probably about three weeks ago. It was a Monday. I checked my bank account. I had minus £950. I had £2,000 of bills coming out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, some of those, the debt payments, credit cards, my mortgage, all of these payments. And yeah. I had no invoices coming in. Uh, I had no payments that I knew of that were going to help pay for this stuff yeah and that had never happened to me before because usually I, I'd sort of find a way or I had an invoice coming in the next yeah. few days for some work and that is when I realized that if I want to make this indie hacking thing work I need to increase my base level of income whether that's working a bit harder to get some more clients whether that's selling more wallets yeah uh, selling more indie bike sponsors and so I spent most of that week trying to just make a bunch of money and get more clients and increase my value as a as a person but what I also realized then is well I just thought let me tweet about this I've not yeah. really seen any indie hacker or solo entrepreneur tweet about their personal finance you see a lot of people sharing their MRR numbers or sharing yeah. good months or churn I've never seen someone share their personal finances and so I shared my a screenshot of the minus 950 with the bills coming out it was just straight from my bank account yeah. <laughs> i was like I didn't, that's not something i've seen before and i just got an outpouring of support from people just such lovely kind messages i got a ton of dms from people that have been in a similar position much like with the mental health thing they've been in a similar yeah. position with money they fixed it and they want to help out this is just people wanting to help out of, out of the goodness of their heart because they've been in that position, they know how bad it is, and they want to help others who have been through it. And I think my life will be considerably better if I get a handle on my money and my spending, pay off the debt uh, while increasing my income. Yeah. So I had this idea that what about if I like up the ante with this accountability, with this openness, with this sharing? That's like maybe doing a blog or a podcast where I share all of my numbers in my journey to paying off debt. I was going to call it like, I'm in debt, get me out of it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and so I, I've I thought about it and I, I don't know if it's, I don't know what you think about this, Mark, but I just feel like it's 
a level too high of over <laughs> oversharing where it's like all my finances like what if someone i don't want to get a hold of that information maybe <laughs> a creditor or my credit card companies or just sharing yeah. a little bit more than i should what i've maybe thought about is just doing a written version of it where i share top line numbers how much my debt i've paid off how much i've earned keeping it high level but open and have that accountability still this this is is so important because it feeds back into the whole burnout thing you know if you have that kind of pressure to pay off your debt and you need to work more and then you just feel that you need to push yourself mm. more it can be a, a real negative cycle going on there you obviously put an enormous amount of effort into being able to work independently so so my last question for you james is it worth it oh yes mark 100 percent is worth it <laughs> i knew that I, would be I, your I answer absolutely... but i had to ask <laughs> I absolutely love my life at the moment, right? I'm feeling much better from where I was. I've got a hugely supportive family around me, which some people don't have. I'm very fortunate to have that. I've got a lovely flat where I can work. I've got this community of people, of indie hackers, of entrepreneurs that are all supporting me with doing what I'm doing. I hope to support them. I, I, I'm inspired by other people who are doing similar things and want them to succeed as well. That is like the, the main reason I do my podcast, Indie Bites, is to inspire other people to start indie small businesses. I'm not saying it's the route for everyone. But yeah, the freedom, the flexibility, the time I get to work on my own projects and I get paid for doing it is just amazing. The clients I get to work with as well, are often really cool clients doing really cool work. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's 100% worth it. Uh, listeners, if you'd like to connect with James, you can follow him on Twitter at J McKinven. That's J-M-C-K-I-N-V-E-N. Or you can go to his website, jamesmckinven.com, and do check out his podcast. They are great. I listen to them every week, Indie Bites and No More Mondays. So, James, that was awesome. Thanks so much for joining me on the Quit Work podcast. Mark, thank you so much for having me. It's been a really enjoyable conversation. I love everything that the Quit Work podcast stands for. Thanks for listening to the Quit Work podcast. I love talking to people who have taken the bold step of quitting their job to start living their true life. Join me for a fresh conversation every week. Subscribe to the podcast or the YouTube channel at quitworkprojects.com. And if you have any comments on this episode, or if you'd like to tell your own quit work story, I'd love to hear from you. Contact me at quitworkproject.com or on Twitter or Instagram at quitworkproject. I hope you too find your way to quitting work and living your true life.